A very good morning and good afternoon to all the participants and speakers present today. Um, in this session, we will be discussing an avalanche of collaboration triggering maximum SDG 6 and SDG 13 synergies. So we all acknowledge the interlinkages between SDGs and achieving one goal may be mutually reinforcing or contradictory with achieving other goals. And in this case, SDG 6, um, access to water and sanitation and SDG 13 climate action are clearly interlinked. Improved management of water and sanitation services is fundamental not only for climate change adaptation, but also for mitigation and collaboration plays a very major role in this. It is widely acknowledged that the chances of achieving sustainable development goals, six, and 13 by 2030 would be significantly improved if we have increased collaboration and fewer trade-offs and greater synergy. So it is time for collective action. And today we will see a few collaboration avalanches that have made it across, triggering maximum synergies in achieving SDG 6 and 13. So without further ado, let's get started with a presentation on a paper that was released during the World Water Week, uh, this World Water Day this year, and um, it is on shaping the water sector to be more climate resilient. So I call Leonardo von Straten from EXP Consulting to present this paper. Over to you, Leonardo. Thank you, Shobana. So let me share my screen. I hope everybody can see the screen now. Yes. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so I'm just uh, trying to very briefly introduce the paper and the purpose of uh, our session. Um, so I have just three main points. And one point is the background and the purpose of uh, our paper. How was it structured and what were the main conclusions? And maybe more important for today, uh, look forward how to come to avalanches of collaboration. For all the participants, if you go to the files in for this session, you will find the paper if you haven't seen it yet. But you will also find uh, papers which have been cited uh, in the paper and others as well. So you can download it from there. So uh, we started uh, one year ago more or less exactly with um, this, um, the week of uh, water and development. Uh, this was one year ago and uh, we have uh, one purpose that was mitigation and adaptation. And uh, so seven months later, uh, we presented the results in the paper which, were, which was mentioned. So uh, the, win the, the first purpose was that uh, everybody's talking about adaptation when it's uh, about water, but it's also about mitigation. And uh, so we had some figures and it's a more or less 5% coming from, from the water and sanitation sector, 5% of the greenhouse gas emissions. It could be more. So if you go to the reference stop floating, there you will find figures that eventually even more than 10% of uh, greenhouse gases. So mitigation is also important. And we saw that the concepts and technologies to do something, they really exist, but they are scattered across different organizations and different countries. So we should start bringing them together. And that was the purpose that we wanted to achieve. And how was the paper structured? Well, we started with the guidelines and you will also find them in the download. And of course, we have uh, two different types of guidelines. We have guidelines about collaboration, which are in the upper part of this uh, slide. And we have uh, topic related guidelines. You can download them. But from the guidelines, we went uh, to the ground just to see what kind of real, really cases do we have. And we have six exemplary cases. One is from GIZ in Peru, which is about institutional collaboration and the main result inclusion of mitigation adaptation <clears throat> in a national sanitation framework is possible. <clears throat> For waterworks, we have the water operation partnerships, and it's a very clear that long-term peer-to-peer approach is a very successful form of collaboration. From Hamburg, uh, we had a utility contribution 
<clears throat> this uh, contribution was also triggered by the city's ambitious climate plans. And we see that uh, mitigation forces are economic of, economically viable. We went to Bolivia and uh, on the watershed level, we have cross-sectoral collaboration and wash and <clears throat> water resources management. And we saw in, in, in this case that this is vital and it is manageable. And we went to Uganda and Zambia to the topic of social entrepreneurship. And we see that success depends on the ability of global and local sectors to collaborate. So also what we see is that uh, expansion and cross-sectoral approaches are needed, but it must be done proportionally and with due consideration of opportunities and risks. So it's not about only, yes, we're collaborating, that's fine. No, we have opportunities, but we also have risks. Now we look forward, what's about the avalanches? It's not only about knowledge, it's also about action. And so I very much like this, uh, this graphic. This graphic shows you, it's uh, from this, the paper cited here, you will also find it in the download files, that uh, we have a business as usual state of our earth and we need a decarbonized state. And uh, on the path to this state, uh, we have several huge walls, mountains, hurdles, and we need to put heavy weights to pull these hurdles down. And uh, so silos are part of these hurdles. So we need to break down silos. And to do that, we need persons or organizations that are able to think in this cross-sectoral way and they need to have a mindset to partnership. And so persons can trigger this kind of uh, collaboration purposes, passing it over from one organization to the other, creating some kind of avalanche. But of course, you also need finance. So and if you do that, you have a social tipping point and the desirable result is this one, which is shown here in this graphic. So it is possible to reach a decarbonized state. That's a very simple, message, but it's difficult to achieve, of course. So we are really eager to hear about your experiences. We'll share a little bit of our experience ourselves. And so please go to either the breakout room managed by Chris or either the breakout group managed by Martin. You can choose that. It's about um, social business or it's about uh, urban areas, water and sanitation. Thank you very much. And I go back to Shobana. Thank you, Leonardo, for this very insightful presentation on the significance of climate mitigation and adaptation in the water sector and examples of collaboration from different parts of the world. Now, um, I will briefly explain how the breakout rooms are going to work. So um, in the chat, you'd be able to see two different rooms. But before you join the breakout rooms, um, I will introduce the facilitators of um, the two breakout rooms who would uh, briefly explain um, the case or rather give the pitches for the breakout rooms. Um, the first one would be the role of social business collaborations in the climate change context, which is being facilitated by Christian Weber from Viva Con Agua. Now, Christian will briefly introduce the breakout session and um, and then um, we can move on to the next breakout group. So Christian, over to you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, hello everybody. Hello, wash people, listen. Um, <laughs> I invite you. <laughs> I invite you to my uh, breakout session number one, um, where we showcase why social business solutions are fundamental for climate change uh, mitigation. Um, yeah, our aim is to activate and engage the youth, local wash actors and impact investors to develop a thriving social entrepreneurship pipeline for wash solutions, leading to several innovations to scale uh, so SDG 6 related impact can be achieved. In our breakout session, the wash pipeline goes to Zambia and to Uganda, showcasing two unique ca uh, cases of social business collaborations in the wash sector. So motto of the day, let's join forces and do some epic things today. Thank you, see you in a minute. Uh, thanks Christian for that quick pitch. Now over to Anke who would be um, pitching for the second group 
on climate change adaptation and mitigation in urban areas, water and sanitation. Uh, the meeting will be facilitated by Martin, but Anka will be giving the pitch right now. Over to you, Anka. Thank you, Shabana. Yes, Sierra Breakout Groups is indeed about urban areas. More than half of the global population already live in urban areas, especially in many emerging and developing countries, cities grow fast and out of control. Water and sanitation systems can often not keep up with this growth, and urban access to pipe water is even decreasing at the moment. The impacts of climate change make it even more challenging. So therefore, in our breakout group, we will discuss strategies and experiences on adaptation and mitigation in the urban water sector. We will take the collaboration perspective, finding opportunities for communities, donors and NGOs to work together. So if you are tired of uncoordinated donor interventions in cities, come to our urban breakout session and share your opinion. Thanks Anka for doing a very quick pitch. Um, so you will be using Miro boards in both breakout groups. And I'm going to very quickly show you how to use the Miro board by sharing my screen. So um, you would be able to enter the Miro board with the link that would be provided on the chat. And here you could give your name if needed, and then click on continue. Um, and then click on enter board now. Okay, so I'm just quickly giving my email address. So I'm unable to enter the mirror board. Uh, perhaps somebody else could share the screen and I could quickly uh, give a voice over if that's okay. Martin, could you kindly share your screen? Thank you. So um, you can see the mirror board here. And then when you double click, um, you would be able to create a new uh, note or you could just use the note that is um, already there. So when you click on the note, you would be able to type. Um, uh, you could type in sentences. You could also make the note appear bigger or smaller by dragging one of those three um, or four um, circles that you see at the end of, um, or the edge of every note. Um, and if you want to create a new note, then you would just double click on the plain screen and you would receive a new note. And, uh, or you could use one of these options that are available on the left-hand side corner, um, where you see um, create templates or create a new sticky note um, and then add text. Um, so you could create sticky notes of different colors if you want. Um, and so here you would be, you would just have to go and click on every table to create a new note and type uh, your opinion or outputs on these um, three headings. So the mirror board uh, would be available as links on the chat. Um, and also you would have the access to the breakout rooms on the chat. So we can go ahead and break into different groups now, please. On the chat, but uh, on the chat section, please enter your um, click on the link or to the breakout room that you would like to join. I see that the first, uh, the second breakout group is complete, but um, the other group would join us shortly for a joint summary. So let's probably wait for a few more seconds for all participants to join. Yes, that was a brutal interruption <laughs> in our breakout session. <laughs> uh, 
Um, due to time concerns, I'm um, let's move on to the summary. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed the breakout rooms and the discussions there. So uh, my questions would be to the first breakout room now um, on the role of social business collaborations in climate change context. So um, I think um, in this breakout room, uh, Katarina, could you kindly sum up what were the main takeaways from the session on uh, social businesses? Yes, I think um, I would start with um, that. I find it quite interesting that um, these were like two cases were presented. Uh, which both both involve social businesses, but at the same time have two different approaches to how to cooperate with social businesses. Uh, on the one hand, um, Viva Con Agua and Bad Hunger Helfer investing into a social business called Spouts, and with that helping this the social business to scale up their operations and also access new communities um, and new areas that would not been have been accessible without the investment. And on the other hand, having uh, the case of the Wash and Sew project, where it's a collaboration, like this, the project has been designed from the very beginning um, by a social enterprise, Sew Bottles and Viva Con Aqua, and then engaging with the local organization, Border Zambia, and bringing different expertise that each organization has together to yeah, create something um, big and more holistic that, um, yeah, and that would have not been possible with uh, each organization working on its own. So thank you, Katharina. Now over to George on why are social business solutions fundamental for climate change mitigation and what's your opinion on it? Yeah, my opinion really comes still from the same experience. Like I said, our best on uh, spouse the people that we have worked with here in the country. Uh, the experience has been good because it is through the social business that we are able to outlive our existence even in the areas that we are operating. Through the ceramic water filters that we are able to distribute in areas, rural areas where people solely use uh, wood fuel as their source of energy to boil or to cook. So through the social business collaboration, we are able to mitigate how much fuel they use, but also the cost they, they incur into having uh, into how much uh, firewood or whatever to use. So through these collaborations, they help us to enhance. So I believe uh, continuous collaboration with the uh, social businesses, we can really go very far in a sustainable way because social businesses are able to live, outlive even projects. So they live further. So this is my belief. And I, I, I think uh, the, the mitigation of climate change will uh, be worked on furthermore because of these kinds of collaborations. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, George. Uh, now over to Chris on um, what do you think are the main advantages of collaboration between the different stakeholders from diverse sectors? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I would put it in a, in a more general context. Yeah, I think um, traditional project-based approaches tend to be uh, characterized by a single organization trying to achieve the greatest impact with the limited resources at their disposal. This method often results in projects with little measurable lasting improvements in access to, to essential wash services. And uh, yeah, we can only achieve a larger scale and impact by collaborating and partnering with other organizations. And um, that's why we as Viva Con Agua partner with the private sector, civic organizations, uh, citizen collectives, and yeah, and different coalitions when they share our commitment, the, our agenda and our values. Um, yeah, and we will engage in continuous regular and structured communication to, uh, to create a trusting relationship and our accountability to our partners. Um, yeah, I'm convinced existing networks can increase the impact uh, and effectiveness. The active involvement of partners from new sectors helps us to get organizations out of their sectoral silos. So with that, uh, I think 
a lot has already been achieved. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Christian, for that uh, insightful summary on social businesses. Now over to the second uh, breakout room on climate change adaptation and mitigation in urban areas. Um, so from here, um, I would like to pose some questions to the facilitators. Um, Mintia, uh, could you kindly sum up what were the main takeaways from your breakout session? Yes, thank you, Shobana. Um, so we also had two very interesting collaboration examples of uh, Waterworks, of the Water Operator Partnerships, and also of the Wacklim Roadmap, uh, especially looking at how to improve climate mitigation in the water sector. And uh, then we had uh, a Miro board where we were collecting some ideas on main challenges and also um, solutions, how to overcome challenges in collaborating between climate and um, the water sector. And so a few main challenges I want to highlight um, from the participants was that there are diverse goals. So um, people or organizations are being pulled in different directions. So it's difficult to align sometimes. Um, also, there's a lack of priority and awareness on climate risks, but also on opportunities of climate resilient water and sanitation systems. And also organizations are overwhelmed because there is a wide range of pressing problems and uh, climate resilience is just another one that comes on top of it, or that's how a lot of people feel about it. And um, also a limited involvement of communities in the decision making. But there are also a few um, ideas on how to overcome these challenges. So to improve collaboration, um, the development of a joint agenda between the water sector and the urban development and climate um, sector in a city, the alignment of goals, um, mapping risks, and also seeing not only the risks, but also opportunities of climate resilient water and sanitation systems and how um, these can also address other vulnerabilities in cities, let, such as poverty, housing, water scarcity. Um, I think those are the main takeaways I wanted to highlight. Thank you. You're mute, Shabana. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks, Mintia, for bringing out the complexity in uh, climate mitigation and adaptation when it comes to the water and sanitation sector. So over to you, Martin. So how do you think you can ensure the local ownership of collaborations? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I think that that's a very, very important aspect uh, because if we as, as donors and NGOs and government institutions uh, collaborate, uh, we don't achieve anything if we don't involve the local community. So I, I agree it's a very important step uh, and it will not work without it. Maybe one, one success factor is to engage the municipality or the community and, and any also the civil society uh, were not organized in a, in a formal way from the very beginning. And uh, I think also from what Mintje said, um, sometimes we have different uh, um different objectives or priorities but we can if we do the same we can achieve most of it uh, for example if we achieve climate resilience we can also alleviate poverty um, so i think we we can we have a cake and uh, if we engage well with the local community everybody can can get something of it uh, thank you martin for describing how important local ownership is for collaborations um, now, the last question would be to Anka. Um, so you've been preaching for collaboration, and that's the theme of this um, session. But does Waterworks um, also collaborate with GIZ? Yes, thanks, Giovanna. Yeah, indeed, I mean, for this session and the past year, also for developing this uh, paper that we um, developed together, we've been uh, collaborating a lot. But on the other hand, um, we are working on the development of the second phase of the Waterworks program. And for this phase, um, for this program, we are in development of an operational fund uh, for utilities. 
And then we found out that GIZ is also doing something similar because they are developing an urban catalyst fund. So we found out that we're both developing a fund um, for very similar for very similar goals for urban water utilities. So now we are trying to find out what are the opportunities to uh, collaborate on this uh, on this fund and to see well we can learn from each other with both our experiences already and to see if we can create a combined uh, fund. So this is an example of where uh, collaboration uh, takes place. So thanks Anka for highlighting how you are intending to collaborate with GIZ. Um, so, and I will open the platform now to all the participants to ask any questions. So you could either uh, just unmute yourself or you could just use the chat from Pathable to ask any question. So do we have any questions from the audience? Um, I see that there are no questions at this point from the audience. Shabana, um, may I have a suggestion? Um, I think uh, we are almost, uh, yes, we ran out of time now, so the session mm -hmm. will be closed. So my suggestion would be that um, the participants could type uh, their main takeaway uh, from what they learned today, what they saw today in the chat. Yes, that sounds good, Leonardo. Um, while the participants are typing, uh, could you also, from your expert opinion, give a punchline for what is the key takeaway of this session? Well, I, I mostly joined the, 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 the session social business and I already uh, put a chat uh, message there and it says, uh, for the social business, there is no need to leave all climate change mitigation efforts to governments and industry. A collaboration of NGOs and social business can also create a substantial impact on their own, adding up to the total efforts. That was the main takeaway from the breakout room that I had. Uh, thank you, Leonardo. And um, I see a comment on the chat from Olivia Kunz uh, mentioning collaboration is key. That is indeed um, a good punchline or takeaway for the session. So just to um, summarize very quickly, since Leonardo had given his takeaway from the social business group, uh, um, would someone else from the other uh, group like to give a key takeaway point? Perhaps Anka? Uh, thank you, Savannah. I think in a minute the room will automatically close, uh, so I might be interrupted. Um, but yeah, for me, um, it is key to keep on uh, collaborating um, with many different uh, with many different stakeholders, and also think they're out of the box and also not only look to the ones you already know, but also to uh, unfamiliar partners. Thanks, Anka. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. And we really hope that um, this will trigger a lot of avalanche collaborations uh, between several other organizations that will create maximum impact um, between SDG 6 and SDG 13, which is water and climate. So thank you all once again for joining the session. Um, I think the presentations and the recording will be available on Pathable. And we hope to see you next year probably on another topic. <laughs> and next year live in Stockholm. Thank you very much, Shobana. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thanks, bye. everyone. Thank bye -bye. You. Thank bye. You. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye to everyone. Bye, George. <laughs>